Ironically enough, even uh, Donald Rumsfeld said we must wage peace. We should look at peace and violence the way we look at health and sickness. Sickness is the absence of health. Health isn't the absence of sickness. People know now it's not enough to just treat sickness, which I believe we should with universal health care and Medicare for all and so forth. But we have to proactively create uh, health. That's why my whole health plan, which people can find at Marianne2024.com, uh, it does as much to proactively create health as it does to treat sickness. The same with peace and violence. Violence is the absence of peace. Peace isn't the absence of violence. And as Martin Luther King said, positive peace can only be predicated on justice and brotherhood. So we have to wage peace. And there are four factors which statistically indicate that there will be a higher incidence of peace and a lower incidence of violence. These are called peace-building skills, okay? The four factors are, number one, greater economic opportunities for women, greater educational opportunities for children, a reduction of violence against women, and a reduction of unnecessary human despair. When you are in any corner of an American city or any corner of the world, when those factors are present, you're going to have a higher, a higher incidence of peace. What we do now is we do not address those things. And then when the almost inevitable dysfunction, collective societal dysfunction, including ideological capture by genuinely psychotic forces arise, our only response to that is bombs and prisons. That's absurd. We should have a peace academy as well as a military academy. And as far as peace in the world is concerned, we have to imagine, and this is what American presidents should do. You know, JFK said, if we don't get rid of war, war will get rid of us. And I want to imagine a world without war in a hundred years. And then let's reverse engineer from there. Some people say that's very naive. I think what's naive is to think this species will even still live on this planet in another hundred years if we don't at least try. So I look at the military the way I look at a surgeon. If you have to have surgery, we should have the best surgery, and we should have the best surgeon on hand. But a reasonable person tries to avoid surgery. And so we need to have, like I said, peace games as well as war games. And we need to make diplomacy and peace building far more, far more of our for formula for foreign relations. At this point, you know, we sell arms to 60% of the world's autocrats. So a lot of our State Department, what we think of as diplomatic efforts, a lot of it has to do with arms sales.